got the update last time, so I'm not surprised. But um, I haven't seen the Paul Kage uh, at MSM. And he's already so much everyone he's played so far in top 64. So uh, I, want, I want to see how this goes. Me too, man. Me too. Me too. Let's get right into it now. Hopefully I got the name right. Yes, I have the names right. All right, so it's going to be, like you said, starts a Paul Kago versus MFA, Snake versus Olimar. We had a little bit of a conversation going on about, like, this matchup in Brawl, but I've never seen it. It's been quite some time since I've actually seen this matchup, even in Ultimate. Yeah, I I, uh, I know it's had to have happened so far, like, maybe MVD and the Buzz or something like that. It's just, like, since we haven't had, you know, offline tournaments that much, and for some reason, Olimar is not used online that much, even though I feel like he's a really good online character. Um, you, don't, you don't see it that much, but uh, right now, yeah, MFA, one thing I noticed also in his other matches is that he's really good at using the purple aerials and the side B, because you're, like, you're forced to block the purple side B, otherwise you're just going to get hit like that, right? Yeah. So, yeah. He's good at conditioning the shield, but nice conversion. Oh my god, you always got to be ready. As a snake player, when you hit that grenade setup at that percent, you can just get a really good aerial. But I'm surprised he died to yellow up air. Like snake's pretty heavy. He might have yeah. crossed with the guy with that. But um, um, this is yeah, this is gonna go back and forth. As you can see right now, it's like it's like uh, it goes back and forth in the projectile war. Sometimes it's good for Almar because his pigman will block block the grenades, but other times if he throws the pigman too close. The grenade while it's next to him, he'll, he'll just blow up right, right in front of him. Yeah, it's, I feel uh, like Olimar has a little bit more space in this matchup and very well aware of like where grenade is. Like you said, because if it's, through, it's too close, you're definitely only worrying about Snake. That was a really good purple. I actually set him off once again with the purple. He only needs that one to get oh, him off the stage, man. 122. Yeah. The purple forward air is super active. Oh, he called that rollout super hard. Like he was already charging the up smash way before he rolled. Great play so, from MFA. Uh, yeah, yeah MFA is very good. I uh, kind of sucks that like you know we're doing with all the online stuff because he was doing really well offline before. But uh, it's good to see him still do well, you know, online as well. Cause I actually like Olimar. I like to watch him. You don't see him that much. Some Olimar matches, I will admit, I'm a very much of a fan of, but other ones, I'd rather not see them at all. Good stuff to MFA. Barely surviving the C4. There's the yeah. fourth throw. Sets Playing up for the back air. Yeah. Great called, play. Called the jump out super hard there. And again, he's just really good at using the purple. Like, once he has the purple in his hand, he just, like, goes on attack mode because he knows that they can't... They have to block the purple Pikmin toss, so that forces yeah. them to shield. And once they're in shield, that's when you can start playing a little bit more aggressive. Uh, he also seems to have a good handle on how to deal with Snake's disadvantage. Because he just didn't let Snake land really easily. Covered his air dodge really well. Um, yeah. Honestly, this matchup was pretty hard for Snake in Brawl. Mainly because of uh, Pikmin being able to deal with the grenades really well. And he had six of them. I figured it wouldn't be as bad in this game. Because he doesn't have his mean Pikmin. And his recovery is much worse. In my right, opinion. right. But, uh... I don't know. We haven't really seen Apollo Kage abuse those weaknesses so far. So yeah, I'm, I'm really curious uh, how he's going to adapt here in game two. It's actually the first game he's dropped so far in top 64, so he might be a little bit shook, you know, like it was easy, easy sailing until now. <laughs> Definitely yeah. easy sailing until now. Well, I don't, I don't know. I didn't see the games. I don't know if it was a close 2-0 or whatever. But, you know what I'm trying to say. Well, yeah, I, mean, I got you. I got you. Don't worry about that. Anyways, once again here, MFA sets up. I like the fact that he lets go of the stage a little bit just to get some Pikmins, and he's looking to find a, try to come around a little bit because he's really well aware of, like, this is the war of attrition of, like, okay, when do I find the Pikmin to finally get Snake to come into my range? I'm actually not even going to come in my range, to get to his range so I can start laying down the damage. And you can see it in MFA, like, he knows what those grenades can do. So he's very well aware of the game plan, what he has to do against it. I like the F smash, honestly. Oh, oh he, the C4? Mm. Dude! I don't know if he knew about the sticky there, but that was amazing. That was a clean play. And something else I noticed that MFA was doing, I'm not sure if he was doing it on purpose, probably was, but he was farming the red Pikmin to um, get around the explosion of the grenade. It, yeah. It, yeah, the, the red won't even 
uh, die if the grenades blow up on it. So you just keep blowing them. But uh, right now he doesn't have opportunity. That's another thing that's also really good against Almar is fake dash attack. Uh, Almar's landing options are really bad. So if you can force, or rather condition Almar to start jumping in neutral, you just hit his landing with dash attack every time. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that MFA kind of caught wind of a little bit earlier, where he's like, okay, in the distance game, it's pretty much Pikmin versus Grenade. And it's because they're keeping a distance. But when it comes closer for Snake, yeah, he does have to worry about his landing. Oh, no. Yep. Yep. That's the thing about Armor's recovery. It's very easy to hit with that Nikita. So you got to be very careful in that situation. But great stuff for Apollo kind of talk, capitalizing appropriately. And now this is a huge leap for him. Honestly, oh, yeah, double dash attack. Take, take any dash attack you can get on Armor. But yeah. at this point, um, any trade he gets is in his favor. If I'm him, yeah, I would keep doing exactly what I'm doing right now. Just apply a lot of pressure with the, the projectiles. And then, you know, don't really force anything, really. You don't really have a, a big reason to, you know, rush this right here. Like, yeah. You're winning by quite a bit. The only reason why he rushed you. He'll really early. Like, he, he's going to struggle to take out Snake. Easy. Right, right, right. And the only reason when we saw Apollo Kage kind of rush a little bit there with dash deck, was like you said, right, to catch the landing. Oh, there's pressure and the C4, but it's going right back to him here. It's kind of like playing around with the C4 at this point, because now Snake has him himself. Stuck it to Olimar and the explosion and the finish. Wow. He is dead. Dude, that was sick. Yeah, Paul Kage is a very good Snake player. And uh, I can appreciate a lot of the things he do. He does, since I play Snake myself. But even then, like, he has a lot of very interesting setups that I don't see other snakes play for, but it's, yeah. it's working really well. I think that game especially because once he had the lead, it, it seemed like MFA was running into way more things because I guess he was just struggling to make you know the comeback happen. But. Exactly. I think it's like you said, right? Even though he knew that the C4 was stuck between both of the players, he knew that when he got that back throw, that C4 was still on Olimar and perfect time to actually execute it. Honestly, Snake is one of those characters that, like, if left unchecked, he just snowballs you because there's so much you have to do to fight against him that it feels very, very oppressive. Kind of like Olimar almost, but except you have to worry about, like, interacting with Grenade, which is already enough, and then also trying to interact with Snake, who has a really good dash attack that's able to get in and out of opponents. And then on top of his recovery, which is pretty solid with the way that Cypher works, and him edge guarding you with Mikita, like especially against Olimar, where Olimar's recovery is very exploitable. It's it's a lot to deal with. I personally feel like this may be Snake matchup favored, but hey, man, I don't want to tell you guys what yeah, I think it is and I, could I be actually, wrong. Yeah, yeah, I actually think you may be right. If not, then um, even, but Snake definitely has a lot more um, ways to abuse Olimar in this game in comparison to Brawl and anyway. So. Wouldn't be surprised. But let's see how this goes. Like running it right back to Pokemon Stadium 2 again. I don't really like that decision for MFA because I feel like there's quite a few stages he can do really well on this matchup. But let's see what he can do here. Already off the bat, he's playing a lot more aggressive. He has to watch his shielding habit on the platform. Yeah. Uh, Apollo Kage is just getting free sticky C4 every time he sees that. Nice catch on the roll. The up tilt. Great air dodge, though. I'm not and sure if he knew the best explosion was coming, but it definitely right. saved again because he would have probably died there. When you see the sticky two every time on him holding the shield, he always does an excellent job of pressuring with down air to force MFA to let go of shield and then Ooh. still get the C4. So you can tell that Apollo Kage does that sticky with a lot of purpose, especially yeah. when he applies pressure with down air. Great use of sticky there, simply because if MFA oh, was going to try to catch him on the jump recovery on ledge, he would have covered that with the C4 explosion and then got an Olimar away. All right. Apollo Kage is just applying so much pressure right now. Like, MFA is just trying to get his bearings really. I, I really, there's not very, well, outside of this moment, but there's not a lot of moments where he's actually trying to, you know, hit Snake. He's just trying to, oh my God, he read his soul there. Jesus. But he's just <laughs> trying to get, like, his bearings back. He's not even necessarily trying to, you know, hit Snake, really. But Apollo Kage is just not letting it happen. Like, everything is working in his favor right now. Nice. He uh, Z drops the grenade, cooks it a little bit, runs to the center stage. Yeah, his uh his grenade usage right here is very very good. Yeah, I mean like I said right, it's snowballs. Oh, that was a good empty hop too. Immediately to get that forward tilt. That's probably gonna be a rest. Nice down air to cover that up as well. Oh, he's. I like run off down air. Uh, run off double jump down air. He's gonna die there, but 
Yeah, if he committed to up B, that was easy down there with no double jump, probably would have died. It's a good idea, it just didn't work out. Still, huge lead. Honestly, MFA can't even get touched at this point. Down throw tech chase. Oh yeah, he doesn't even need the tech chase. Not gonna die, but still, he has the Nikita set up here. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the easiest yeah. edge guard in the game. Very easy on Olimar, especially with no double jump. And he had all his heavy Pikmin too, so he couldn't even really maneuver that well. He was basically just a sitting duck. But uh, yeah, and now that means Apollo Kage, I guess we'll go to top eight winners, right? Yep, that is correct. Yeah. We are now entering top eight winner side.